Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you guys. Uh, before we get started, I have a few announcements. Um, our first announcement, before we get into the, <clears throat> the announcements, the first thing uh, that I would like to tell you guys, and, and me and Randy were talking about this, is uh, we wanted to uh, let you guys know that this week, and this is kind of maybe shocking to you guys, I, I don't know, but this week or this pay period, Randy Caulfield uh, did not receive uh, a paycheck. So um, <clears throat> he's not worried. That's not why, that's not why he's not here. Um, he's actually up in, uh, he's up in McAllen preaching at uh, one, of our, one of our brother or sister churches, uh, an Acts 29 church up in McAllen. Um, with one of my good friends, uh, who's the pastor up there, his name is Marco De Leon. He's he's up in McAllen, uh, just building that relationship bond within churches. I think it's super cool. But but he's not worried about it. Uh, this happened uh, this happened a few years ago where we were we were in a similar a similar situation, and uh, Randy had made the announcement, and a bunch of people came back and said, "Well, why didn't you tell us earlier?" <laughs> so uh, that's what we're doing. We're telling you guys earlier uh, this time. <clears throat> uh, our first announcement is uh, ICON. Uh, we have ICON today. ICON is our middle school to high school ministry. Uh, we hang out. We build relationships. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we play games. We uh, eat or we study the Bible. Uh, we we're going through John right now. It's, 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 it's really cool going chapter by chapter uh, through John. So it, it's a lot of fun, guys. And, uh, and then we eat after that. So we all have a row back there of tables, and we all sit together, enjoy one, one another's company, and, <clears throat> and, and we just have a good time. So if you are a middle school student or a high school student, 6th through 12th grade, I invite you to stay after service today. It's in the kids' wing uh, from 12.30 to 2.30. And, man, if you guys get to come and stay, I would love for you guys to be here. I would love for me to get to know you. I'd love for all of our other ICON students and leaders to get to know you kiddos. Well, I'm not a kid anymore, right? Uh, you teenagers. Um, and uh, yeah, just come. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. And I know our kids do also. So what do we have next? <clears throat> Prayer gathering is on Tuesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, this is a great opportunity. The, the building's open. It's quiet. Except for my kids, they're in the nursery, like, throwing beanbags at each other. But in here, it's really nice. It's really quiet. And it's a good time to come together and pray. we got some music going on. Uh, Pastor Randy's here. Uh, I'm in and out of the nursery with my kids. And it's just a sweet time to come together uh, and join with the body of believers, uh, just coming alongside each other and pray. So if you have not come, you know, this Tuesday is a great opportunity, a great first time for you to come. Hope to see you there on Tuesday. Uh, community nights, man, <clears throat> they, they're like getting better every week. It's awesome. Um, so if you have not come to our community, community nights on Wednesday nights, man, I invite you to come. It's such a good time. Uh, if, you, if you've missed out, that's okay. You can, come, you can come on Wednesday and you can join the fun. Uh, we have big table groups. We have uh, prayer with, with, with uh, uh, at the end, we have Chick-fil-A. Man, it's awesome. It's awesome, guys. I, I strongly encourage you guys, if you have not can't come, again, like I said, if you haven't come already, uh, go ahead and come to that from 6.30 to 8. We're done at 8 o'clock, and you guys are good to go. So, again, Wednesdays at from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, can you go back to the last slide, Nolan? Also... <clears throat> On your connection card, guys, um, this helped us a lot last week. If you could write, if you're planning on coming to this, if you could write, if you'll need a sandwich or a salad on your connection card, and then put it in the offering basket as the offering basket goes around at the end of the service, that'll help us get a count for how much food we need, so we make sure that we have enough, but that we're not ordering like 500 sandwiches. So, okay. Um, Next week, Sunday, October 10th, immediately following the service, we're going to have uh, a member and friends meeting, and it's our vision for what, um, where we're going in 2022, where, where, where Randy, where myself, where we see us going in 2022. We're going to talk 
uh, about where we're going. We're going to talk uh, what that's going to look like. We're going to talk about how much all that's going to cost. Um, it's going to be, man, it's going to be really cool. That's, again, that's next uh, next Sunday, right after the service. So I would imagine most people would just stay after the service, but that'll be next uh, next Sunday. We're going to have a vision uh, meeting for where we're going in 2022. So hopefully you guys can be there for that. <clears throat> One last thing. Um, we are going to be doing baptisms here pretty soon. Uh, so if you have not been baptized and you want to be baptized, uh, go ahead and also put that on your, I was going to say Chick-fil-A card. This is not a Chick-fil-A card. Um, your connection card. Put that on your connection card uh, just so we can start to, 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 to see who all uh, is interested in being baptized. Let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, uh, for today, Lord. Thank you for this Sunday. Thank you for the body. Thank you for the church. Lord, thank you that we all get to come together uh, because you have called us to come together. Lord, thank you that we get to come together and we get to uh, participate in your work with you, Lord. Such a, such a blessing. Uh, Lord, I pray uh, over our hearts uh, this morning. Lord, I pray that you speak to our hearts. I pray that, that you, 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 you work on our hearts and you change our, our inclinations, and, and you change our desires to want to pursue you all the more. Uh, pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. So, <clears throat> uh, when Elise and I first got married, uh, you know, I, I, I was a young guy, and I came from a church in McAllen where uh, our pastor, man, he was, he was a guy who was always speaking into the hearts and, 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 and speaking to the young men and the young women about marriage, uh, to the young men about being, you know, a pastor, a provider, or a protector for your wife. And so just before I started dating Lise, I was uh, under this teaching a lot. This, this pastor would constantly, constantly, constantly be grilling the young men, right? Like, hey, you guys got to pastor your wife. You got to know the Bible. You got to study. You got to be able to lead her uh, spiritually. You got to be able to provide for her, right? You got to have money, uh, uh, not all the money in the world, but you need to be able to make sure you have a plan so that she is provided for so that you guys aren't, <clears throat> aren't uh, struggling in that way. And one of the last or the last part to that is, is protect her, Right? He, he would challenge us as, as men to be protectors of our wives. So protecting them uh, you know, against, against e uh, wrong saying or against false teaching or just protecting her hearts, guarding her hearts, right? Um, this protector of your wife. And so, <clears throat> like, I'm all jazzed up. Get, once I met Lisa and I'm, like, getting ready to get married, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do all these things. And... Uh, and, um, and so, so I was trying to really hard. And, and we, we lived in an apartment uh, off of 802 uh, during this time. And, and I remember one day, uh, you know, i am just got to be a pastor, a provider, protector. And I walk into our apartment, and in our kitchen, all of the kitchen cabinet doors are open. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I uh, have not been protecting my wife and you know, if you've ever seen this before, you know that you're thinking maybe, possibly, that someone just broke into your house and they like opened all the drawers, opened all the cabinets, and are uh, uh, searching through all the things to get what they can get. And so I walked into this setting and I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I was like scared. I was like, Lise, what's happening in our house? And she's like, what? what? What's wrong? I've been here all day. I said, why are our cabinet doors open? She's like, well, I, I just... I left, I left them open. I'm like, all right. Uh, so, much, so much for that, right? False alarm. Um, but I tell us that story because going into a marriage, uh, being in a relationship, it, it, it's, it's, it takes some getting used to. It takes some learning about each other. Um, and it's very much the same way with us 
as we come into relationship with Jesus, as we come into his church, into his fold, there's this, like, what does that look like? What does that mean? And so our sermon series, uh, our, our sermon series has been Home is Here. Our sermon title today is Living Within the Church. And so we're going to be talking about what it looks like, not just to be a Christian, but to be a Christian inside inside the church. All right, since Christ invites us in, right, into relationship with him, <clears throat> we are to participate in fellowship with him. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to look at that today. It's going to be in, uh, we're, going, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, the first nine verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You don't need to go there just yet, Nolan. Uh, but before, I, before we get into that, I want to give you guys a little bit of a background to the, to the Corinthian church. Okay? So Corinthian, uh, the church in Corinth, right, the city of Corinth, was a big popular city. Uh, there was a, a, a trade route uh, near it. There was a lot of trade, a lot of commerce, a lot of business there was, uh, and because of this, there was, it was like a, just a, a place where many different cultures came together, many different types of people, types of religions uh, came together, right? Think of like a, a Houston or a, a New York or a Los Angeles, just these big cities where they're super, super diverse, right? And so, and so that's, the, the, that's the city, that's the, the church where, or, or that's the city where the church is, is located, the, the, the church that Paul is writing to. Right? Paul saw this place, and he's like, man, this is a great place to go spread the gospel. This is a great place to go uh, preach Jesus to this group of people. And so he did. <clears throat> he did. He spent about a year and a half. Um, he spent about a year and a half in this city spreading the gospel, and people were coming to know Jesus. People were submitting their lives to Jesus, and he was starting to plant a church. And so he was there for a year and a half, and then he leaves, and then he receives a report that the people uh, that were part of this church were starting to misunderstand some of his teachings. Right? They were missing the mark in some areas. Right, they were missing the mark uh, as far as the teachers. There was uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul. There was Peter. Uh, there was Apollos. And all of these people started to uh, associate more with these separate teachers than, than, they, were with, with, than they were with Jesus. Right? They, they had uh, inappropriate or, or incorrect views on sex and, and, and how uh, people should, uh, just what their 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 what sex should look like. Um, they, they had uh, confusion about the things that they could eat. Right, could they eat meat? Could they not eat meat? Um, they had <clears throat> uh, confusion about uh, how they were to relate to one another in the body of believers. There was a lot of division within the church. And they had divisions on uh, their views on the resurrection with Jesus. And so there's all of these different views, all of these different uh, problems. And so Paul pens this letter, uh, 1 Corinthians, to address all of these issues. Today we're going to be in uh, examining verses 1 through 9. And, and we'll do it a few verses, a few verses at a time. So let's, let's jump in. It says, Paul, <clears throat> called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Now, as we read that, we could read it as to the church of God in Corinth, to the church of God in Brownsville, to River Church, right, to the church of God in El Paso, to those sanctified in Jesus called to be saints. <clears throat> our first point is, uh, as we read this, our first point that I want us to notice just from this passage 
is that we should marvel at our calling. We should be just taken back by being called by Jesus. Do, do, you ever, do you ever marvel at Christ's calling of your life? It has to start here. Do we marvel at Christ's calling of us? Now, just from this opening passage, these two verses, uh, l- let's, let's, let's look at this, right? So first, the first person that we see is Paul, right? Paul was called to be an apostle of Jesus, right? He was sent by Jesus to go do his work. Now, do we remember who Paul is? Right? If, if you guys remember, if you guys know who Paul is, man, this dude was a bad man. Right? He was persecuting Christians. He was, uh, he was a, a Pharisee, a esteemed Pharisee. His name used to be Saul. He was persecuting Christians. Right? He'd go door to door and get Christians. If they found out there was a Christian in there, they would, they would arrest him. They would take him away. Right? He was at the stoning of Stephen. Uh, who was a Christian who loved Jesus. He was at his stoning. He oversaw these these deaths. We see it in in Acts chapter 7, this account uh, of of Stephen. This this guy was like the worst of the worst, and the Lord saved him. The Lord called him home, called him to himself, and said, Hey, man, we're not going to be doing that anymore. We're going to be, I got some other work, some better work for you. Man, how, how marvelous, how amazing is that, is that transformation of Paul's life. The second group of people that I'd like us to, to see from this passage is the Corinthian people. Right? This was uh, just, just they, they, were, they were living in all of these uh, even though uh, Paul had come to them, had spread the gospel to them, had taught them, they started to have all these different beliefs and different opinions on the gospel. And if I'm receiving the report that Paul received on them, if I'm receiving that report, man, these people have questions. These people are uncertain. These people are missing the mark. Right? My first response is, man, you guys, you better get it right because I don't know where you guys are sitting right now with Jesus, but that, that's not how Paul addresses these people. He, he calls them a, a body of believers. He addresses them in their security as being a follower of Jesus. Again, this is a marvelous, marvelous uh, story. Last week, we talked about uh, the story of the prodigal son, right? The son who got his inheritance before his father died. He basically uh, bailed out of town. He spent all of his money. He squandered everything. And then he comes back uh, very shameful. And then the Lord says, no, come back in. You are my son. Let's throw a party. Man. Again, guys, another marvelous, marvelous story. <clears throat> So what about us? What about your story? What about my story? Do we marvel that the Lord saved us? Right? I don't, I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. Every account that we just talked about, none of those people deserved it. But the Lord graciously, graciously did so. Are we marveled by this? When we are not marveled by this, when we are not taken back by this, it's usually uh, because there's something else going on in our hearts. There's a little bit of pride that's going on in our hearts, right? We think, man, you know, I have a commanding voice. Not, Not me, but you may be thinking this. I have a commanding voice. I can command crowds. It's no wonder the Lord needs me on his team to do his work. Right? Maybe you're thinking, oh man, I got a ton of money. The Lord could use me, could use my finances, my financial resources to help better uh, his church. Right? You may be a good teammate. You may be, working, uh, you may be good at working well with other people. And you think, man, if the Lord just 
If, if, if the Lord would just use me in this way, because, man, the Lord really needs me and my ability to do these things and connecting people. We approach these things as, as though, oh, man, if the Lord just would, if, if the, the Lord could really use me, because, man, if he didn't use me, then, oh, man, I don't, I don't know how the Lord would do it, right? I don't think the Lord would be able to make it without me. Now, all of those examples that I just said are not bad things. They're all good things. But Christ doesn't need us in those ways as, there's, as if there is some sort of deficiency in his power, as, as if there is some sort of deficiency or something lacking in his nature. He can, he can, do, he can do it. He doesn't need us. But... He graciously calls us in. He graciously includes us in his work. He calls us to be a people set apart, right? Hey, I got this, but I want you to come with me. I want you to be here. We should humbly come before the Lord, come before Jesus with hearts of gratitude. If, if we're struggling with this, I just urge you guys, turn from that wickedness. Turn from, repent from that, Lord. I'm sorry. Use me however you see fit, Lord. Right? Maybe, maybe you're on the opposite end of this. Maybe you think that, man, there's no way that, there's no way that Jesus would want anything to do with me. Maybe you're just waiting, man, if I were to just wait until I clean myself up, until I stop doing all of these bad things, then I'm going to get right with the Lord. Then I'm going to pursue the Lord. I'm, I'm just telling you, that's not how it works, guys. Paul was on his way on the road to go persecute more Christians. He wasn't turning from his wickedness. He was in his wickedness, and the Lord calls him to himself. You don't have to get it right before you come to Jesus. Jesus did the getting right for us. He lived the perfect life that we know that we are not living. He got it right. He bore our punishment for my inability, for your inability, for our inability to get it right. He bore the punishment for that. Right? And he says to you, he says to me, come. Come on in. I want you guys. Come here. I want you guys. And you may be looking at him and say, Jesus, I don't, I don't deserve to come. I don't deserve to be there. And he would say, I know you don't. Not on your own work. But opening his hands to you, showing his pierced hands to you, would say, but I got you covered, man. Come on. Let's go. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, guys. It's marvelous. If you're not a believer in Jesus, uh, if you're feeling that tug, man, the Lord, you don't have to clean your act up. You don't have to change anything. The Lord has done the work. Come to him. Come back, come back to him. If, if you have been a Christian and you've kind of been sitting on the sidelines for a while, waiting to clean up uh, your life, waiting to do things right, Jesus says, just come back, man. Just come to me. Come. Come back home. Come back with me. So I want to encourage us in that way, guys. Let us marvel at this. Moving on to this next section in 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> it says, To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call upon the name of the Lord the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus calls us to himself, right? Uh, you may have, uh, a, just recently right now, you may have just opened your eyes to Jesus, accepted his forgiveness for your sins, 
But as Jesus calls us in, he calls us to the church. So, so what does it mean? What does it mean to live within the church? It's our, our second point. It says, we must have humility in our calling. We must have humility in our calling. You see, these people, we just talked about the Corinthians, they were divided over teachers, over sex, over food, over the church and how they should uh, uh, cooperate with one another. They were divided over the resurrection. And as we just, uh, as we just talked about it, um, at the root of this was their pride. They were most interested in themselves. Right? They were most interested in the gifts that they were receiving. Right? And, and, and uh, when they talk about the spiritual gifts, and I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians 12, they're talking about the spiritual gifts, and all these people are trying to one-up one another. Right? I got this gift, and, and people were desiring these, these, these higher gifts, these more esteemed gifts. Right? And, and why were they doing this? Not to bring glory to, to Jesus, but so that they could be that guy. Oh, I'm the dude that spoke in tongues. What did you do? I'm the dude that was healing somebody. What did you do? Right? <clears throat> but this passage that we read, that we just read, says that we are called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of the Lord. We are called to be together with them. What does that look like in our context? When I was a young Christian, I struggled with this. Right? I thought my understanding of Christianity was the best one. Right? I thought that the, the church that I went to was the best church to go to. Right? My pastor, uh, he used to wear just cool clothes all the time. He had all the cool gear. He had all the cool accessories, the, you know, the iPads, uh, the, the G-Shock watches, the I Apple. I mean, he had it all. He was just the coolest dude. I was like, man, this guy is awesome. The way this guy preaches is awesome. My pastor is better than your pastor. But I was arrogant and I was snobby. I thought if, if, if your church isn't doing church the way that we're doing church, if your pastor isn't, isn't a pastor the way that our pastor is, man, you guys are missing the mark. And I was completely wrong and completely foolish, and that's not what Paul is saying here. I did nothing to build up the church, right, the global church. <clears throat> The Lord has been working by God's grace. The Lord has been working on my heart in this area. Guys, there are a ton of churches that we have called to be believers alongside, right? And, and I love them. I love these churches. I love BCF. You know, I love Good Shepherd, First Baptist, uh, Logos Baptist Church, Living Way, Resaca City. Uh, that's up in San Benito, uh, uh, Logos in Harlingen, uh, Storehouse and McCallum. I love these churches, guys. We should love these churches too. As people are worshiping in these different churches this morning around Brownsville, around the valley, around the country, around the world, I pray, my hope is that they are coming into a relationship with Jesus. I pray that their hearts are uh, being transformed more into the image of his son. And I pray that we all understand that we are all together uh, called to be saints, right? Together. In humility, we see that we are together with those in every place. <clears throat> the next point is uh, point number three. We must be assured of our abilities. First Corinthians one four to eight says, "I give thanks, my God, always 
for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as a testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless, in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you catch that? Did you, did you hear what he said? He said, we are not lacking in any gift. We, right here, we have everything that we need. I am a basketball fan. I like basketball. Um, I mean, this is like every professional sport, what I'm about to say, but you see it a lot in basketball. Basketball, the NBA is about to kick off again uh, here, I think, within the next, like, month. Um, but it's really interesting. So, so every year, like a team will, will put their best players together, will get all their, 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 their team, uh, try and, uh, try and uh, go through free agency and get all of the missing pieces that their team needs to be successful, right? They just went through a season. They didn't do as good as they wanted to do. And so they start to like go back to the drawing board. What can we do better to allow us to contend for a championship, right? They're always doing this. Every year they're doing, uh, having these sorts of meetings. <clears throat> and so, man, within the past, I don't know, 10 years, there's been this idea of the big three or the super teams, right? I think it started with, uh, man, I don't know if any of you all remember this, but let's see, Paul Pierce, uh, Ray Allen, and Kevin Garnett, right? They all went to Boston, and they all teamed up on the same team, won a championship. It was really cool. But ever since then... Right? People started to do this, right? LeBron James, man, if you all follow LeBron James, like he's always getting, trying to get the best players to play on his team. And, and, and they do this with the idea that if we can just get the right people on our team, then we'll have the success that we want to have. And so for LeBron James, it's worked out for him. Uh, in some cases, it has not. But there's, this always, there's always this, let's look at our personnel. Who can we change? Maybe we need a new coach. Right? Maybe we need, if it's football, maybe we need a new quarterback. Right? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they were really good, did not have a good quarterback. They got, well, he was good. He just wasn't playing good. Um, sorry. Uh, he's with the Saints now. He's actually doing really good. Um, <clears throat> good quarterback. If we could just replace this piece on our team will be good, and, and they did, right? They got in Tom Brady. I mean, he's dude's a beast, and they won a Super Bowl, right? Uh, but there's this idea of man, we gotta we gotta outsource from the outside, look uh, and bring someone in to make our team better. The same approach is sometimes taken in the church, right? We'll bring you'll bring in a specialist. Uh, someone who knows a bunch about, you know, church growth and how to promote growth and, and how to, 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 to take your church to the next level. And they'll usually, they'll usually suggest three things, right? They'll, they'll suggest that uh, you need, uh, if you guys just brought in a new pastor, then that would be good, right? Maybe bring in someone a little bit younger, uh, maybe someone who's a little bit more uh, educated as far as seminary is concerned. Uh, but if you guys just bring in a new guy, a young, energetic person, then you'll have growth. Right? Sometimes, sometimes I say, man, if we just, you know, if we moved locations, if we just went to a different building, man, you all will see growth. And it's understandable why. I mean, people get excited about that. People get excited about wanting to move. And, they, and they'll, they'll say, if you do that, you go to a new place, it'll bring in more people. Another third way that uh, these specialists um, will, 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 would recommend is uh, that if you just got new programming, right? If you did things a little bit differently, maybe, maybe if you did more topical sermons or, or maybe if you did more uh, books of the Bible teaching sermons, right? Or maybe if you had different children's curriculum or, or a different... Uh, uh, coffee area, right? If you had something different, some different type of programming, your church would grow. 
And what we just read, guys, is these things aren't, aren't bad things, but right now in the life of River Church, we don't need those things. We don't need them right now. All of these focus on some sort of external change, right? Some sort of, man, if we just change this one thing, then church would be better for us. But we don't, we don't need these things right now. As we read, I want to highlight this passage again. Uh, it's in verse uh, 7 from the passage that we just read. It says, so that you are not lacking in any gift. Everything that we need as a church is here. I'm not saying we're, we're shutting the doors and we're not letting people in. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying for the life of our church right now, what we have in this room is what we, it's enough. We have everything that we need. And I'm talking to you guys. Like, like touch, I'm not going to go like touch you guys and shake you. But like touch your, like, I guess shake your hand or pet your, Like I'm talking to you, right? Us, together, we, here. We have everything that we need so that we are not lacking, right? It just says, so you're not lacking in any gift. Guys, we have what we need inside of this room. Man, that's super encouraging, guys. I, 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 I spoke briefly, if you're here for the, um, the uh, team appreciation dinner, man, I spoke briefly on this passage, but this idea of we have what we need. All the work that uh, needs to be done at River Church can be done, and it has been done uh, with what we have, uh, the people that were sitting at the table, and to extend that, uh, the people around this room today. Right, so we need to be sure of our abilities, and, and as, as, as Paul just said to the Corinthian church, Right? You have what you need, so you are not lacking. So that, but this begs the question, so if, if we have what we need, so we're not lacking, what are we to do? What do we do with that? And this leads us to our fourth point. Which we must get involved. We must get involved. 1 Corinthians 1, 9 says, God is faithful. This, this is ending the rest of the passage. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We are called into the fellowship of his Son. Now, what does fellowship mean? We were talking about this the other night. You don't have to answer out loud. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what does fellowship mean? We, we talked about this on Wednesday night, and it's one of those terms that's kind of like, okay, I, I, this kind of means this, this one thing. Uh, it it, it kind of means hanging out with people and being around people, but it kind of means, you know, something like what does it, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty as to what it means. So I want to talk about that. I want to tell us fellowship means, in, in this passage, fellowship means active participation, right? We are to actively participate with Jesus. We are to actively participate in the work that he is doing. All right, I want to read the verse again. It says, God's faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship, into the active participation of his son. We take our lead. We take our lead from Jesus, right? Jesus is our example over and over and over again, and you see this in the book of John, he's always saying, I did not come to do my work, but I came to do the work that the Lord has sent me to do. Right? I came to do the will of the Father. Always. That's always what Jesus is saying. Right? As, as Jesus is one with the Father, right, we, his church, are one with him. Right? We are his bride. We are called into this active participation with the work that Jesus is doing. 
Now, as we, as we think of this phrase, as, as, we, as we think about being actively an active participant with Jesus, our minds might immediately go, immediately move towards this individualistic approach to Christianity. Man, I'm doing the things that I need to do, right? I'm loving my wife well. I am being a good neighbor. I'm being a good coworker. I'm doing the things that I need to do, that Christ calls me to do well, right? I'm good. Right? And I'm not saying that those things are bad. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do those things, absolutely do those things. But here, Paul is addressing the local church. Right? We, too, are called to be active participants in the church. So my question for you, my question for us, is are we active participants at River Church? Are we active participants in the body of Christ? Look around, guys. Now, before you guys start looking around, it could get awkward. I used to have my students do this, and I hope no one's looking at me when I look at them. But I want us to look around. Like, look around, glance around, or maybe wait till I start talking again, and then look so no one's looking at you. But, but, but if you just look around... There are a lot of people here that have not uh, been here, that were not here. The Lord is working, right? If you came here this past Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, we had, I think, five table groups set up. <clears throat> and there was probably about 50 or 60 people here. And, uh, and each table at our table, I was, I was with uh, everybody who has a baby, ended up sitting at the table that I have except for Victor and Molly, they don't have a baby yet. They're getting married, though, so hopefully. Anyway, um, and so, but we were at our table, right? We were sitting there, and there was like 12 of us around the table, and I remember at some point there was conversation happening, and I, and I took a step back, and I looked at the makeup of our table, <clears throat> and there was 12 people at the table. Of those 12 people, four of them were people who have been here longer than two years, right? Everybody else at our table was somebody who's relatively new, right? It was me, Lise, my wife, Victor, and Molly. Those are the only people that were here longer than two years, right? Everybody else is a relatively new face. I was like, oh my gosh, where are these people coming from? This is awesome, Right? I looked at the, 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 the table uh, next to us, and the same thing, about half of that table was filled with people who have not been coming to our church. Right? I looked over to another table, and the same thing was, was, was going on there. There was people there that I had not seen before. They, they, had, they had just started coming. There was actually a family that just rolled in. Like, I was like, man, I've never seen those people, and they're here. This is awesome. Right? The Lord is working here at River Church. The Lord is doing things here. Praise God, man. That is awesome. <clears throat> that is awesome. But are you, are we actively participating in that work? Right? There are many things to do at River Church. Right? I mean, you could be like a door greeter. Uh, you could help out with the kids' ministry, with the nursery. You could help... Uh, set up and tear down. Um, you could help organize the chairs. You could come in during the week and make sure that the restrooms have toilet paper. I mean, there's just so many things you could do. You could pick up the connection cards uh, from the print shop. Uh, you could be part of our communion team who, who prepares this communion every morning. Uh, I mean, just the, 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 the welcome table, the, the coffee. There are so many things to do here, guys. So many things to do. Right? Maybe some of those things, uh, like I was saying, like maybe being a door greeter or a teacher, maybe being in front of people is a little awkward for you. Again, we have stuff where you could come in during the week. Right, I'm here all week. Uh, you can come in during the week and you know help organize things, help set things up, uh, help help make sure things are ready uh, for Sunday. You could do a lot of behind the scenes work. Right, you can call Chick Fil A and make sure that we're going to have food here on Wednesday nights. There's so many different ways to serve, guys. There's so many different ways to actively participate. 
Now, you may be thinking, <clears throat> you might be thinking, oh, well, that stuff, like, man, I don't, I don't want to do that. Or that, how is that actively, how is that actively participating? I mean, that's not like sharing the gospel. That's not preaching. That's not leading a gospel community, although you could do all those things. But I want to encourage this, guys. All the work here, there's nothing that is a small job. There is nothing that is, uh, 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 there is no small way to participate. And all of this stuff, everything that we do here is, is for the glory of Jesus, is to bring much fame to his name. It's so that people can come in, feel welcome, feel like, man, this is what it's like to be part uh, of a church. Man, this is what a beautiful church looks like. It's all, it's all meaningful, guys. It's all important. And as I said on Wednesday or on, on Friday night of our team appreciation dinner, all of the stuff is, all of the things in every way that everybody serves, it's all meaningful work. It's all actively participating in the work of Jesus. So, as, as you are sitting down, and this is something that you could write on your connection cards, if you're interested in serving, guys, it's one of the things that I am working on at River Church. Uh, <clears throat> some of y'all want to know, like, what, what does Billy do all day? Um, <laughs> one of the things I'm doing is trying to build these teams, right? Trying to build, build the infrastructure of the church, right? Making sure we have a, a greeting team and a nursery team and a ministry, uh, a children's ministry, right? Trying to put all of these teams together. So if there's any way that you feel like you may be interested in serving, man, write that on your connection card. Put it in uh, the offering basket at the end of the church, or at the end of the service, or, or when offering is going around. I would love to read those and love to try and plug you guys into a spot. If there's something that we're not offering and you want to do it, write that on the card. Right? We should be able to work it out. Unless it's like handling snakes or something like that. We won't... <laughs> We won't do that one. But if there's some way that you feel like we could serve, you could serve, man, write that down. Write that down. <clears throat> As we close today, I want to share one last story about my marriage. Some of you all may have heard this story before, but it's, I like it. <laughs> um, so there's one year when Lisa and I were, were newlyweds, we had moved out of the apartment where all the cabinets were open, um, and we moved into our house, and uh, I wanted to go out with some of my friends, right? And so I was, you know, with my, with my spouse. I loved her. I was married to her. I made a commitment to her, but I was like, I'm going to go hang out with my friends, right? And, and I don't, I hate, I hate trying to get away from Elise. Not like get away from her, like, oh my gosh, but like, I hate being apart from her, right? Where she's at, I want to hang out with her. I'm, as much as she is jealous for my time, uh, I am also jealous for her time. Like, I want to be where my wife is at. And so anytime that I'm going to leave, like, it, like, I hate asking those questions. But I was like, hey, Lise, you know, I want to hang out with my friends. Uh, it's, I think it was one of my friends' birthday. Uh, I'm going to go with them, right? We went to go, like, watch a football game or something. <clears throat> and so we did. And so I leave, and she's like, okay, we'll just, I guess, come back in an hour. And I was like, cool. It was like 8 o'clock. So I was like, cool. So I left, right? And if you've ever hung out or with uh, friends, like, just driving there and back is like 30 minutes. Like, that, that's all your time. Like, you're done, right? You have no 30 extra minutes to hang out. Like, that's, that's not going to work. And so I got there. We are hanging out, watching the game. And, uh, you know, that, that hour goes by. And I'm like, man. I'm not going to go, you know, I'm not going to go home yet. You know, the, the second half of the game, it's a good game. I'm just going to stay here a little bit longer, right? And so I did. I stayed a little bit longer. And then, you know, the game ends, and they're like, hey, man, it's, it's my birthday. Let's go, to a, let's go to a restaurant. And so we did, right? We go to this restaurant. We're hanging out. <clears throat> and it's like, it's a, it's, it's like, at this point, it's already like close to 12 or 1 o'clock at night, right? And uh, I was like, man, I'm just here. You know, I'm like, I'm not even doing anything bad, but. <laughs> but man, my wife's gonna kill me. She's like not responding to my text messages. Um, 
Yeah, you've been, everybody, we've been there, right? Um, and so that's where I was at. I was like, you know what? The evening was over. It was time to go. It was like 1 o'clock. It's time to go home. So I went home, and like I, I, I get to my house, and like usually my wife leaves a light on. <laughs> but this time, like I walk in, it's like darkness. And I was like, I was terrified. I was like, man, my wife is probably like hiding in a corner, like going to jump on me and attack me. <clears throat> but uh, whenever I come home and all the lights are off, like I know I'm in trouble, right? And I've talked to my wife after the fact, and she's like, yeah, I just want you to feel the darkness. Like, I want you to be scared. I'm like, good night. <clears throat> yeah, so... But, but, but looking at that story, looking at that account in my life, I realized that although I had made this commitment, this, 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 this commitment to, to, to love my wife, to be in relationship with her, I was still living my life independently from that relationship. Right? I was in the relationship, but I wasn't living like I was in the relationship. The same thing is true, or the, the same thing I want us to see with our, 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 um, our passage today. I want us to be in relationship, right? Christ calls us his bride, the church. He calls us uh, uh, to be one flesh with him. I pray that, man, as we are uh, making that commitment, as we believe that with all of our hearts, I pray that our actions are not this individualistic, I'm going to do my own thing, but we are seeking to grow in that relationship with him, in our commitment, in our love for him. May that be true of us. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we thank you for, and we just thank you for the, your word. Thank you for the church. Thank you for us being your bride, Lord. Lord, we, we are a broken, a frail, and undeserving people, Lord, but you call us in, and you love us, and you call us your own, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I pray as uh, we uh, just continue in worship and as we go on throughout our week, Lord, I pray that our hearts are, are, <clears throat> are driven, are inclined, are leaning towards just a pursuit of you, Lord. Lord, for those of us who, uh, you know, have been coming to church for a while, Lord, and are not serving, Lord, I pray that you just, you, you create avenues for us to serve, Lord. I pray that you give us the courage that we need, Lord. As, as we identify as a Christ follower, Lord, I pray that we actively participate in that identification. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.